Welcome to this demo. So in this demo, I'm going to show you how you can play with open V switch and open flow flow rules. So let's to start. So here I have a virtual machine uh, and it is a mini net, mini net VM. Um, it is a network uh, virtualization emulation operating system that you can download from mininet.org. So um, if you're watching this, uh, what we are going to do next is we are going to create a virtual bridge, then create a couple of network namespaces and connect those through the bridge and see how the connectivity works as well as play with uh, some OVS command line uh, tools, uh, OVS-VSCTL and OFCTL. And that will allow us to modify the flows or show the existing flows that way we can actually see how we can use open flow rules on open v switch to restrict the flow of traffic so let's get started so first i'm going to create a bridge but before that i have already created a plotnet config uh, diagram using this plotnet config program and this is what it looks like right now all we have right now is a loopback and eth zero excuse me so in ETH0, um, this is where we are connected to right now. So if I show you right now here, uh, this is how we can see the IP address and this is the diagram of that. Plotnet config is a great uh, small utility that you can use to visualize your network. So as soon as I use this command, OVSCTL add bridge BR0, and I run the plotnet config again, I can see that now I have a new um, item added here which is br0 open vswitch and ovs system open vswitch you can ignore this ovs system because it that's i think a kernel uh, placeholder for open vswitch and it gets automatically created as soon as you create a switch and it can get deleted as soon as you delete a switch so next thing that we are going to see here is we are going to uh, set this bridge to come up and if we do that and see the diagram we can actually see that the diagram shows the bridge is green and now that means it is up next thing we want to see is we are going to uh, see if we can connect our eth zero to go through that bridge instead of directly uh, going out through eth zero so before that uh, i am going to show you what it looks like right now if i run the ip address command this is what we see we have ovs system we have it zero we have br0 br0 is set to unknown uh, or when we uh, set uh, to come up uh, and that's expected um, and what we want to do next is we want to flush the ip address of this eth zero and connect that to br0 and get an ip address for br0 so for that i'm going to exit out of this shell and i'm going to uh, go back to uh, VM actually the VM console uh, through virtual machine manager um, and if you cannot see this uh, I apologize in advance but I couldn't actually find a good way to uh, make it bigger any further than this um, but here what we are going to do is we are going to do OVS VSCTL add port BR0 ETH0 and what that does is we look at it we will have uh, not really we will not really see anything here but I'll show you the diagram in a minute but it is essentially connected the ETH0 to BR0 and we can verify that using OVS VS CTL show BR uh, show and you can see ETH0 port is connected to the bridge and uh, interface is also named ETH0 next we want to do IP address flush uh, device is zero. So IP address command will not show any IP address for ETH zero anymore. Although the interface is still up. Now we use the H client BR zero to acquire a new IP address. Once we do that, if we run the IP address command, we can see it has gotten a new IP address um, and it is set to 
contrary to the one previously we, uh, we had previously so we will do 125.117 and we are in the VM again so now we can go back to this better screen and now if I were to see the diagram I'd have to update the address here again uh, and I could potentially try assigning the same address uh, as previous by using static addressing but I just was lazy to try that out and I just thought DHLAN would help us so that's all we do here and now we have BR0 up and ETH0 is connected to it and BR0 actually has the IP address so now the traffic is going out of BR0 and um, now we since we were able to SSH into the system that means that we are already connected and traffic is flowing as expected next we are going to do is we are going to use IP net NS command and what that will do is it will tell us if there are any existing network namespaces there are none so we are going to create two of them one is called red another one is called blue and then for each of those let's see what our diagrams shows so if you look at the diagram diagram is getting a little bigger now we have blue and red as two network namespaces and they are shown here in a square or rectangular container and um, container pun intended because this is how uh, probably container uh, runtimes create the network namespaces to to hold the container uh, uh, rel container networking in an isolated environment from the host operating system now once we move that out of our way we need to first bring up the loop back interfaces on these and that's because if you look at the current status of it the loopback interfaces are set to gray so they are currently not active so if i were to actually go into one of these namespaces and look at the bash um uh, sorry look at the namespaces blue and i'm inside the namespace and all we have here is loopback and it's currently set to down if i do ping c2 local host it says network is unreachable or if I even use 0.1 can't do any of that now so because we have the network unreachable error we first need to make sure that we bring up the interfaces so we are going to do that using um, using these commands where we just use uh, to uh, use IP link set device loop back up and we executed that using IP net NS exec inside the blue namespace as well as inside the red namespace now if we see our diagram again both of the interfaces are up now if I if you're seeing this um, give me one second now if we actually go back into the one of the namespaces and we actually run the uh, ping localhost it works so that proves that we just brought up the interfaces now exiting out of the uh, namespace again so as you can see we are out of the namespace we are in the root namespace here um, next we are going to do is we are going to actually create a pair of ethernet cable a virtual ethernet cable that will allow us to connect from this blue and red namespaces to br0 respectively so to do that we need to create a virtual uh, ethernet pair and that can be done using these commands um, so i just created two ethernet cables so with uh, b1 b2 with r1 r2 
and these are the names of the two end of the ethernet uh, of a single ethernet cable so imagine that if you have a single physical ethernet cable in the hand and it has two uh, two ends to it and both of those probably like rg45 connectors one is going to go into the namespace and other one is going to go into the uh, bridge and we have we are currently naming those uh, interfaces as b1 b2 and r1 r2 so that we can identify and operate on those so if I refresh the diagram again, now we can see that we actually have these two namespaces, uh, sorry, we, we eth pairs connect, uh, created here. So we eth r1, r2, b1, b2, but they are currently not connected to anywhere. They are not doing anything, they are down. So first thing we want to do is take the r1 and b1 ends of those and put them into the namespace and r2 and b2 ends of those and connect those to the br0. So we will do that. Uh, using this command IP link set with R1 and with B1 to netness red and blue refresh our diagram and we see that the Ethernet pairs are connected now the next thing we do is we take the other end of the cable and plug that into the bridge BR0 when we do that and refresh our diagram again we can see that visually that we just took those pair of cables and attached them to the bridge and the network namespaces respectively now the next thing we would want to do is uh, bring those up at, and add some IP addresses on those so that we can actually allow the communication uh, to happen to and from uh, these namespaces and the host namespace so this is the root namespace in which we have two other namespaces that are isolated from the host network namespace host network namespace is the primary networks namespace on your system um, and these are the isolated ones that we created just now um, for containers virtual machines probably uh, they use something similar on the back end uh, that we are seeing here today in the demo now let's go ahead and, and take care of the bringing those up so i'm gonna run all these four commands um, so as you can see i just ran these four commands and they two of them executed in the uh, host namespace and other to execute in the uh, network namespaces and we refresh our diagram uh, and we see that now all of these are green that means they're up and once we are done with that we assign IP addresses to them so we go here and we run this command and with the IP addresses and diagram refreshed we can actually see that everything is an IP address now we have IP addresses to these R1 R2 and B1 B2 interfaces and now if we were to try to ping all of them we should be able to do that and for that I'm going to run ping C2 for all four of them uh, back to back so let's do that um, see uh, we have been able to ping 11965 uh, 12275 11964 and 12274 so we are able to ping these interfaces uh, from the host operating system now what we want to do is uh, from the host namespace we can actually jump into one of these uh, namespaces so let's go for blue uh, namespace so we are here right now if we say ip address we can see we have the same ip address that we see here and let's try to ping the other uh, other end uh, which is 192 168 122.74 and sure we can do that so that means our networking is uh, properly set up and the next thing we are going to do is we are going to actually see uh, the next demo or next section of the demo where we have the open flow and in this open flow demo what we are going to do is we are going to see existing flows that exist in this uh, flow table uh, table 0 and that uh, that is on this switch br0 and we can see there is only one entry 
uh, cookie is a field you can probably ignore because that's what I've heard from uh, some people in OpenShift networking in one of the meeting recordings that I saw. Uh, duration is how long the switch has had this particular rule present on the switch. Um, then number of packets it has processed and number of bytes in those packets it has processed. Priority is set to zero. Zero is the kind of lowest priority or very low priority as you can see. Uh, the higher the priority the more uh, importance that rule gets um, when a packet arrives. And action is set to normal. So right now the switch, uh, even though it is open V switch, it's not doing anything special. It's acting like any other switch um, and it is actually forwarding the traffic uh, on all of its ports. So now we are going to uh, do some uh, add some new rules. So first we can also see that if we use OVS OFCTL uh, show BR0, we can actually see what ports of this bridge are connected to what interfaces. So port number one is connected to ETH0, port two is VETH R2, port three is VETH B2, and local itself is BR0. This is a good command to see the port IDs because in some of the uh, flow rules, you need to use something like action equal to output on port two or port four or whatever that could be. That's part of the syntax. Uh, you can look it up in the man pages. But um, for now, I'm going to add some simple rules and uh, let's see, now I can actually ping again, uh, 192.168.122.74. Let's try to use a flow rule to stop that. And using this rule, now if I check these uh, dump flows command, I see a new rule that is added with priority 10. It's still in the same table, table 0. And it says that if the ICMP traffic or a ping is coming uh, with a network destination of 192.168.122.74, then uh, action is to drop that packet. Let's see what happens if we ping. There you go, we sent two packets of ICMP type and it's not returning any of that. Let's exit out of that and let's see the dump flows. Here's some interesting fact about the dump flows command. It can actually show you number of packets it uh, processed and number of bytes and here it's telling you it sent, it has seen two packets that match these rules uh, and those packets comprised of together of 196 byte in total and it dropped those we could not get the ping response and this the duration says that this rule has been active or uh, was added about 47 uh, seconds ago or if i check again 79 seconds ago now but now uh, let's see how the priorities work now if i were to say that i don't want to uh, I want to add a new rule with higher priority of priority 11 instead of priority 10 as you can see here and that rule would actually allow the ICMP packets and things should start working again. So here's that rule. So we just added another rule in the uh, flow entry in the uh, flow table and that says uh, add priority 11 so it has higher priority if ICMP packet comes in. Uh, with the network destination of 122.74 action is normal so no longer dropping the packets and sure enough we get our packets flowing 